Hi, I'm Joe Hildreth and welcome to My Heap. And this is uh, the YouTube Shop Student uh, episode number eight, where we're going to start a, uh, a project. Um, but hey, before we do that, I just uh, want to say that uh, today is Sunday uh, before Memorial Day, and I uh, am really proud of the country I live in, and I'm very proud of the uh, folks that gave the ultimate sacrifice so that I can live free. So if you don't mind, I want to take a minute and just honor those folks. All right, God bless them. So anyway, welcome to episode number eight, and we're um, I'm going to start a project now. It's been a while. Uh, I think about three weeks since I've put out a video, and man, life has just been busy. I got a new mic, so hopefully it's a little better. Uh, I'm not so sure though. You know, I don't know if it's. I'm starting to wonder maybe if it's my camera or my other uh, wireless mic, but we'll see how this video turns out. So um, I've had to uh, drive to Illinois for a friend's daughter's graduation. I'm proud of her. Way to go, Hope. And um, uh, my daughter, my own daughter, come from Maryland for a few days visit. So you know, spend some time with her and and uh, my spare rib or my bride. I like to call her my spare rib. Uh, if you guys read the Bible, you probably know what that's all about. Uh, she's come down with some sort of I don't know sinus crazy stuff, you know. So I've been trying to uh, help her a little bit where I can, you know. But anyway, that's all beside the point. So. Um, I've not been totally unproductive uh, the whole time that uh, uh, since I last put out a video. I have um, created a project, and the project that I created is uh, the classic old captured nut puzzle. And uh, what I've done was uh, I've uh, created a document, a drawing, a 3D rendering with assembly, and a sequence. Um, of operations guide with pictures for anybody new like me who might like to follow along. Now keep in mind, just because uh, I done it one way doesn't mean it's the right way or the wrong way. I think that uh, I honestly believe that there's a million ways to skin a cat, and this is just one of them. But anyway, uh, you probably can't see this, but uh, there are two pages of uh, just in introductory stuff here. You know, saying why I've created the the project and that sort of thing. Then. I've provided a drawing and I've provided a 3D rendering. If I can get it here, papers. It's humid in my basement, I think, and it wants to stick. So there's a 3D rendering of the project. Okay? And then finally, there's, uh, I'll just show you one of these pages. There's a step by step sequence guide or sequence of operation uh, with pictures. So, uh, for those of you who uh, would like to have a copy of this, it's completely free. You just need to go to my website, www.myheap.com, and at the very top you'll see a metalworking uh, menu option. And then if you cl if you click on that or hover over that below, you'll see the YouTube Shop Student. But I'll also put the direct link um, to the page where this can be found in the video below. So, uh, again, I apologize for taking so long. I thank you for uh, being patient with me and, and everything. And So let me get the camera set up, and let's get started uh, making this project. Okay, before we start, I just want to talk just very, very briefly why I chose this project. You remember my last uh, YouTube Shop Student video, I said, hey, uh, what do you guys think I should do next? And uh, so, uh, someone suggested this here, and I thought, you know what? That is probably a good idea, right? Because I'm a new... Uh, um, machinist, you know, I'm a computer geek trying to learn the machine, and I thought, well, you know what, this uh, this project would introduce me to uh, some things, a lot of things that I haven't done, like thread grooving and um, single point threading and knurling, facing, turning to a specific diameter and stuff like that, uh, chamfering and that sort of thing. So I thought it would be a great project for a beginning um, um, 
want a wannabe machinist like myself. So I thought, well, if I'm going to go through the work of doing it, I might as well draw up a little plan in case somebody else wanted to do it. And uh, here's here's what I come up with. So we have uh, basically three parts to this puzzle. You have part A and part B. There are two part A's, and they are joined uh, end to end um, with uh, a small threaded stud, and then the nut goes between them. Okay, and here's a picture of the exploded and and the uh, finished puzzle here. And the reason why it's uh, considered a puzzle is because when this is uh, when this is done, the seam that's uh, between the two pieces is virtually invisible. And uh, you know, some folks. Uh, uh, you have a few options, and, and I, I won't do it just because, simply because I want to, want you to be able to see what's happening here. Is that uh, when you put these two pieces together, some people will um, put a left-hand thread uh, in the in the two part A's, and use the left hand thread and screw it together. That way, if somebody tries to unscrew it, they nat they don't naturally think about left hand threads, so it doesn't really come apart. The other option is that you can use a dab of Loctite and permanently put to get put it together. But anyway, when it's together and the nut's spinning around on there, you know the question is, hey, how did I get that nut on there? Or hey, how did I make this? And just let them play with it for a little while. But uh, anyway, it's a uh, pretty much a useless toy, um, other than the fact that uh, there's a whole lot of uh, operations that a new lathe operator can can do that will benefit them. So let me get set up and uh, get the camera in position, and we'll uh, we'll start. Okay, guys, uh, for this project, I'm using a piece of three-quarter inch uh, round. This is 12L14. I bought it from uh, Hobby Metals uh, off the internet. I bought a selection of round stock. There's nowhere close to me to buy this stuff. So we're going to start out. We're going to put this in our three-jaw chuck here, and we're going to leave exposed out of the end here. Oh an inch and three quarter so give or take okay so let's tighten that up all right so the first thing we're going to do is change the belt speed to something a little more appropriate for what we're working with. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to face this into this bar square. Going to have to adjust our tool here just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to put a little dab of oil on here. I think I'm right in the way, but I don't know. Let me see here. This is my problem, guys. I don't know, really know where to put the camera. Let's see. How's that look? I don't know. And we'll face this off and then move. All right. Bars faced off square. Now, let me get over here and center drill. Let me move the camera back to the end of the lathe. So, hang on, and I'll bring you right back. Okay, I have uh, repositioned the camera, so maybe that'd be a little better. All right, so we left um, one and three quarter inch out from the chuck, and then uh, we faced the end of the bar. So now we're going to center drill it with a number three center drill. That wasn't so bad, right? And so next we're going to part this off. Now, you know, I said this is for the beginners out there, but now I'm making a couple assumptions here, guys. I'm, I'm assuming that you, uh, like me, have um, um, been watching people like Mr. Pete and Tom's Techniques and... and uh, um, uh, you know, there's a myriad of others out there that uh, that do this. So I'm not going into a lot of theory, uh, obviously. So 
but I will show you how I square this up. <coughs> I don't know if this is right or wrong, but it seems to work well for me. So to square my parting tool, now I've already got it on center, I'm just going to use the square here off the side of my chuck, like so. Okay. Okay, now we're going to part this off to an uh, inch and nine sixteenths. So this doesn't have to be super precise, although I do have to slow my lathe down. Okay, so I'm just going to take the uh, I'm just going to take the uh, ruler here and. down here and put that about an inch and a, what did I say, inch and sixteenth? Oh, inch and nine sixteenths. Alright. So about right there. And I'm going to lock the carriage. And let's part this dog off, man. See how well this goes. And I'll speed the slow stuff up. Alright, easy as that. Okay, now that we have uh, this part parted off, this is actually uh, one of our part A's, right? And, uh, We're going to reverse this part here in the chuck and we're going to face it to length of an inch and a half. Alright, so we'll take our stock out here. Wipe this off a little bit. Now you might be asking why didn't I uh, why didn't I go ahead and break that corner? Well, a corner is going to get chamfered, but all right. So <clears throat> I'm only going to put a little bit of this in here because I got to be able to get my calipers on there, right? And I'm going to show you how I'm going to try to get this square. I'm going to bring my Jacobs truck chuck up. And I'm just going to gently push on that. Matter of fact, let me come out a little more. So I'm just barely nipping it right there. And I'm just going to give that a little push with my chuck and then go ahead and tighten it up. And the idea there is the hopefully I got it reasonably centered in the uh, three jaw. Now is, is it perfect? N no, but look we're making a toy. It doesn't have to be perfect. So there we are. So now I need to face this to length. So the finished length of the piece is an inch and a half. So I'm going to get out my dial calipers and see where we're at now. Just make sure that I can get in there and whatnot. And I can. So Alright, so let me uh, Unlock the saddle here, I mean the carriage, and let me put in my facing tool again. Okay, let's face this to length. Okay, so we've got a good clean facing across here. Let's see how long we are. Okay, so I'm at an inch 562, so I got 62 thousandths to come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little magnetic base and 
and a dial indicator and I'm going to put it over here on the saddle. Preload it, set it to zero so I know how far in that I've come and I want to take, I believe I said 62, right? Yep, 62. So, let's finish this up. <laughs> you know what, we're going to have to speed this up, it's too slow. You think I'd have known better, huh? Yeah, and I am a newbie guy, so yeah, it is. Let's get another measurement on here. Because it actually, I think it walked. Let me just clean it up. Alright, let's see where we're at. Alright, we're at uh, 1 inch 500 and 12 and a half. So, I'm going to re zero my indicator here. And let's take the other 12 and a half. And this doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to try to work close for the practice of working close. The dimension. You'll notice that I didn't put any uh, tolerance on the drawing, right? Because um, maybe I should have, and I think that uh, using three decimal places implies something, but you know what? I don't know enough to know better, so have to overlook me. Alright, see where we're at now. And I am reading 1 inch 50. So you know what? I think I'm going to just take a whisper more. Alright, let's see where we're at now. One inch, 498. 499. That's close enough. That's close enough for government work. So... Alright, so we've uh, got it faced the length, okay, and so now we want to center drill it and drill it to a depth of the half inch with the number 7 drill, and the number 7 is the tapping drill for quarter 20. So, let me get my center drill so we can pilot it. Now let me get my number seven. And I don't have my drill index over here, so let me pause the camera and go get my drill bit. I'll be right back. You can. <laughs> my wife and the, our cat are playing hide and seek in the basement. That's one of the cat's favorite things to do. She'll hide from the cat, the cat will find her, and and then uh, the cat will hide from her and she'll find her. and. That's great fun. They, uh, they're they entertaining, both my spare rib and the cat. So anyway, I've got uh, the number 7 drill bit here, and we're going to drill this a half inch deep. Now look, it can be a little bit more, um, but we're going uh, uh, we're going to um, drill this a half inch deep, and then we're going to tap it with a uh, quarter 20 tap. So let's get going there. Now, I've done the newbie thing here, and I've just put the uh, mark at about a half inch on the uh, drill. As you know, that's, uh, that's what us newbies do. Okay, with that uh, drilled, we can now tap. I'll be using both a uh, regular plug tap and a bottoming tap just because I want to get as close to the bottom of the holes I can. So to do this, I'm gonna remove my chuck. I wish I had a tap follower. 
That's a hint more to my wife because she's down here. She said she heard me. <laughs> she's a good one, guys. She's a good one. All right, so. All right, and that's the bottom right there. All right, so I'm going to take out my plug tap. And put in my bottoming tap. Now the nice thing about working with this 12L14 is that, uh, alright, so I'm bottomed out there, is that it's a very nice, uh, easy machining, free machining steel. So for newbies like me, it's a great deal. So. You know, it's a it's a good deal. So, all right. So, with that tapped, um, we're going to lightly uh, chamfer the thread here. Okay, I just got a four flute chamfer bit here. I just want to we just want to kiss the thread because when you tap, it will raise a very slight burr. And. Uh, Hopefully I can get away with high speed, although I probably should slow it down, but we'll see. Alright, so I should have slowed it down, but what's done is done. That thread is chamfered. Okay, so... Um, we're done with that part here. We're done with this uh, part A for now, so let's, uh, let's remove it from the chuck and we're going to set it aside. Alright, so here's what we got so far. We've uh, faced and center drilled the piece. We parted it off at about uh, an inch and nine sixteenths. We turned it around the truck chuck. We faced it off. We center drilled it. We drilled it with uh, number seven uh, tap drill size for quarter twenty. Tapped it a quarter twenty and followed it up with a, a light chamfer to the thread. And note again that neither of these edges are broken. Now we'll break them here in a little bit, but set this part aside. Okay, so now we're going to take our stock and put it back in the chuck. And, uh, oh, I don't know, we're going to let it extend out here about an inch, give or take. And I do kind of like to spin the stock a little bit, just to make sure everything's seated. Okay, so that's tight. So now, we're going to face this square, just like we've done the other one. So the bars face square, and now we're going to do the same operations we did with the other one. We're going to center drill, and um, drill at number 7 for about a half inch, and then tap quarter 20. So let me get this back out of the way. And you know I keep making those stupid newbie mistakes of uh, like brushing chips off of my fingers. And uh, I've gotten a couple on my fingers and you would think by now that I would know better. But now my wife might tell you that I'm a bit of a slow learner. So I don't know. Alright, so again we're going to drill this here half inch. Thereabouts. And she's ready to tap. Now we'll follow that with a bottoming tap.
All right, so I need to grab a little stud here real quick. So let me uh, pause you and I'll come right back out. Or I mean, I'll come right back. Okay. Uh, so what you want is a uh, piece of quarter 20 all thread or what I done is I just whacked off the end of a little bolt. So we're going to thread this in here like so. And then we're going to take our other part that we made and we're going to thread onto that. And uh, that's a way they. I think I'm going to have to clean out the threads. Okay. So, those two parts are screwed together. And that's really the secret to this whole puzzle. Because when we cut the, uh, the outside threads, that little seam will become virtually invisible. But I tell you what... Um, we're going to have to uh, do this in the next uh, video, uh, but for now, I'll uh, open this up. And we're going to have to extend enough of it of the bar here so that we can knurl, um, you know, the first four inches. So, um, so anyway, I'm going to leave it right there, and uh, in the next episode, we'll uh, cut the threading grooves. I'm sorry, we'll knurl a length of this. We're going to cut threading grooves, uh, and then we're going to turn the center down to the uh, OD for the um, uh, for the half 20 thread. And then, um, and then we're going to single point thread that and do some chamfers, and hopefully we can finish it up in the next episode. If not, it might take three. But anyway, uh, as always, thank you for taking the time to watch uh, my videos. I do appreciate it. I'm sorry that some time has lapsed, uh, quite a bit of time since my last uh, posting, and and hopefully, you know, I can get more, uh, a little more frequent. But hang in there with me, you know, because life happens around my house all the time. It's just all about life happening, and uh, it gets in the way uh, from my fun time. So, but anyway, I'm sure you guys understand that summertime and everything. So, other than that, uh, again, thank you for your patronage. If these videos are helpful, if you think they'll help out another new um, uh, upcoming uh, learning machinist or hobbyist, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, remember um, those who gave uh, all for our freedom. You know, uh, keep uh, keep their families in your prayers and and uh, never forget they're uh, the reason why we are free today. So other than that, have a very blessed day.